An Oklahoma inmate has died after a botched execution, then a second execution stayed. Clayton Darrell Lockett suffered a blown vein, then a heart attack during his execution Tuesday night in McAllister, Oklahoma. Then the execution of Charles Warner has been stayed for 14 days. The Oklahoma's Graham Brewer was in McAllister tonight. He joins us on the phone. Graham, thanks for your time tonight. What happened? Well, essentially, we witnessed a, the first part of a failed execution. Well, I, I say it may be an execution that went awry. Um, after 16 minutes into the execution, um, the curtains were closed, and we weren't actually able to witness um, the death of uh, Mr. Lockett. The media is, is at events like this just to kind of document, hey, here's what goes on, and then you relay that to the public. That's, that's part of journalism. Tonight, mm -hmm. though, I understand the curtains were closed after a certain point. What did you witness? Well, um, the state is using a new mixture of drugs. Uh, the dosage hasn't been used in the United States yet. Um, Mr. Lockett uh, first received the drug metazolam, which is... Um, uh, administered uh, 100 milligrams were administered to him um, I'd say about 10 minutes into the execution he was pronounced unconscious by a medical official um, and then a few minutes later he began convulsing uh, lifting his head and his chest off of the gurney uh, shaking moving his head uh, even mumbling a few times um, it was inaudible the last word he did say was the word man um, at that point, the doctor came over, lifted the right side of the sheet that was covering Lockett uh, to check the vein in his right arm. Um, and then almost immediately after, uh, another official announced that they were going to be closing the curtains temporarily. Um, at that point, they were closed. The media sat there for about 15 minutes uh, before being told that the execution was uh being stopped, uh, Director Patton uh, re-entered the room and informed the media, but we were never again actually able to see Mr. Lockett, and by the time we actually left the execution chamber, we still were not sure whether or not he was still alive. We're talking with Graham Brewer from the Oklahoman who is in McAllister. He was there tonight. Can you describe the scene for us as people realize that this went wrong? It was uh, really confusing. I've witnessed one execution before, and it was a, a, a very fast six-minute process. Uh, when uh, Ronald Lott was put to death in December. Um, but once the curtain was closed, um, there was really no, there was a lot of confusion because we, when I say we, I mean the members of the media, there were 12 of us present. We really weren't, wasn't sure what was going on. Um, members of the Attorney General's office were present. Um, there was a, uh, an official from the governor's office um, and DOC officials also witnessing execution. They uh, had all left the room during that period, walked out into the hall. Um, it looked like maybe Director Patton might have been on the phone with the governor's office at a few points during this period. Um, but we really didn't get any confirmation about what had happened until um, close to 7.30 when Director Patton uh, came to the media center at the state penitentiary and confirmed Lockett's death at 7.06 p.m. Again, we're on the phone with Graham Brewer from McAllister, and officials tonight did address the media. Graham, what did we learn from that? Well, uh, at first, Director Patton uh, came into the execution chamber and said that they weren't sure that the drugs had been fully administered. Uh, later in the media center, um, after his pronounced death, he informed the media that he died of a heart attack and that he had suffered a blown vein during the process, but all three drugs had entered his body. Graham Brewer from McAllister, hard at work tonight. Graham, we appreciate your time tonight, sir. Thank you. Okay, Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon has ordered an investigation. She also issued the following statement saying, quote, I have asked the Department of Corrections to conduct a full review of Oklahoma's execution procedures to determine what happened and why during this evening's execution of Clayton Durrell Lockett. I have issued an executive order delaying the execution of Charles Frederick Warner for 14 days to allow for that review to be completed. And here's some background for you. Lockett was convicted in 2000 of various crimes, notably first-degree murder, first-degree rape, kidnapping, and robbery in a 1999 home invasion. It left Stephanie Neiman dead and two others injured. And in 2003, Warner was convicted for the 1997 first-degree rape and murder of his then-girlfriend's 11-month-old daughter, Adriana Waller. You heard from the Oklahoman's Graham Brewer. He was on the phone from McAllister tonight. You can read more from him in Wednesday's editions of The Oklahoman. You can also read his coverage online at newsok.com. 
And you can join the conversation as well on this story online at newsok.com.